match pairs test. Blood pressure in both arms. Six people are randomly selected and the blood pressure from both arms are recorded below. In general, people believe that both arms have the same blood pressure. The question is, is there enough evidence to show that blood pressure in both arms are different? The significance level is 10%. Alright, so we have a uh, everyone's ID from 0, 01 to 0, 06 and then we have two dependent samples. The first sample is right arm, the second sample is left arm. The reason I say they are dependent is because, so let's say take a look at the first person, the 100, the 150, these two numbers, they both belong to the first person. And then likewise, for the second person, the 106 and the 142, they both belong to the same person. So that's why I said they are two dependent samples since we don't know the population standard deviation sigma. This is a t-test and then for the t-test I have the formula for the test statistics and then one formula for the confidence interval. Okay, so what is the difference? The difference I use, I always use the first sample minus the second sample, which is right minus left. So right minus left, what are we trying to prove? We are trying to prove that there is a difference, right? So there is a difference, it, that, that's easy, just prove that they are not equal to zero. So as long as one number subtract the other, so let's say 10 minus 10, that is equals to zero. So there is no difference between 10 and 10, right? So if you have 10 minus 12, that is not equals to zero. That means these two numbers are different. So different means not equal to zero. So my H naught and HA, so HA is the mu difference is not equal to zero and then H naught is the mu difference equals to zero and then we can move on to inputting the data so look at the first screenshot so first we go to stat and then we go to edit so at the very beginning you go to stat and then you select edit and then in L1 you put the right arm and then L2 you put the left arm make sure at the end of the the column, you don't have an extra number in either L1 or L2 because if you type an extra number, so let's say you type an extra number, so let's say 122 and then you type nothing in L2 when you perform the subtraction, there is a dimension error, dimension mismatch. So that means you are taking 122 minus nothing, right? So let's clean that up. We don't need that. Okay, so we have six numbers in L1, six numbers in L2. So now let's perform the subtraction. First, I need to put the cursor on, on L3, and then I will type second one for L1 minus second two for L2. You can either look at my calculator or you follow my screenshots on the right, and then you get all the differences. So they are all negative. What does that mean? They are all negative. That means right arm is less than left arm. So if you use L1 minus L2, you get negative. That means L1 must be less than L2. So most likely we can reject the no hypothesis. Okay, so let's move on to the test. You go to stat and then you go to tests and then you select the t-test. And then this time will not is equals to zero. And then you put your difference in L3. The frequency, I always keep that one. And then this time we are selecting the not equal. Do you see that right, right, right here? Right there. Do you see that I selected the not equal? Right? I selected the not equal. That is for HA. Right here. Take a look. Right here. Do you see that? I selected the not equal. So that is for HA. This is extremely important. Just listen to me. This is extremely important. You must select the right sign for HA. Otherwise, you will mess up the p value and then everything followed by that will be all wrong. All right, so put a not equal to zero, then this will be a two sided test. And then you, hit, you can hit calculate. So once you hit calculate, then you will be right here. And then that gives you the test statistic, the t and the p value. So this one I have t equals to, so the formula, I already have the formula for you. So all you have to do is you plug in those numbers and then you can hand, you calculate that by hand. So T is negative 5.6639 and then P value that is equals to very small 0 0.0024. 0, 0, so that is less than my 10% alpha. The 10% alpha is written in the question. So 10% alpha, that means we reject H naught, then HA is true. 
what is that mean? We just actually not an HA issue. So that means the blood pressure in both arms are different. So the blood pressure on both arms are different. All right. And then uh, what's next? The next thing that we will have to do is, so at this point that the, the uh, hypothesis test is done, and then usually, some, some, not, not usually, sometimes the problem will like to ask you to say what the p-value means in this problem. So that one, let, let, let me type it up for you. So they are asking a question like this. What is the p-value mean in this problem? So what is the p-value means in this problem? They are asking you this. So what is the correct way to start this? So here is the correct way to start this. You have to assume the no hypothesis is true. So if H0 is true, there is a chance equal to the p-value, which is very small, 0 0.0024. That the blood pressure in both arms is about that x bar value. That the blood pressure between, oh, I should say the different, the different blood pressure between both arms is fifth, around 54.8. So the 54.8, I am taking the X bar right here. Uh, why do you need to take the X bar? Because uh, you assume the no hypothesis is true. Uh, what there is a there is a probability that the data will just go by the will just go by the alternative hypothesis. You will just go by the no hypothesis. So that's why you have to use the X bar. And then uh, other than that, we can move on to the confidence interval. So let's move on to the confidence interval. So how do we get a, uh, construct a confidence interval? So first of all, let me hit calculate so you can see the uh, p-value and the t. And then uh, for the confidence interval, so we have to go to stat. And then we this time we will have to go to test and then we will have to select the t interval. Okay, I, I have to clear this otherwise. They won't let me calculate the confidence interval stat test, and then we will have to go to the T interval. And then this time we are selecting the data option. My difference is in L3. And since alpha is 10%, I am constructing a 0 0.90, 90% 90 confidence interval. Do you see that? 0 0.90. So this is 0 0.90. That is the confidence level. And then once you hit calculate, you will get the confidence interval. So the confidence interval is so let me proceed to the next next step. So the next step is a 90% confidence interval, which is what? That is a negative 74, right? Negative 74.43 and then negative 35.24. So the way I explain it is this. So this is explain. We are 90% confident. We are 90% confident. that the difference in blood pressure the, between both arms are uh, force between uh, when you have two negative I will just remove the negative 74 and 35 you can round, round this up a little bit uh, why do I remove the negative? So, for, uh, how about this? Let me proceed to the next step and then I, I will ex explain why. And then the next thing, which is my favorite part in the entire problem, is verify. Verify what? You, did, you, did you see that we just reject H0? Now, I am trying to use the confidence lead interval to make sure that rejecting H0 is correct. So that is called verify. Uh, what is your H naught? 
what is your H naught? The H naught is mu equals to zero, right? Is zero inside or outside the confidence interval? The answer is zero, is outside the confidence interval. So that means H naught is not true. Then you reject H naught. So, and then you check. So I just reject H naught and reject H naught right here. So this conclusion is absolutely correct. First, I reject H naught using a p-value, and then I build a confidence interval to support myself. Now, let me go back to that question. Why do we remove the negative in the in the explanation? So here here is why. So let's say um let's say five and and nine. Uh, what is the difference between five and nine? And answer this question. What is the difference between five and nine? So the the show work part is 5 minus 9 equals to negative 4. You say the difference between 5 and 9 is 4, right? You don't say the difference between negative 5 and negative... You don't say the difference between 5 and 9 is negative 4. Do, do you say that? Do you say negative 4 or 4? I am sure everybody will say the difference between 5 and 9 is 4. You don't say negative 4. But when you perform the subtraction, you will get a negative 4. So when you are talking about blood pressure, it makes more sense to people that you are using a positive value. If you are using negative blood pressure, people might say, uh, what, what is negative blood pressure? They may ask you that. So when you do the work, when you show the do the work to yourself, you can use negative. Just follow what, what whatever you got from the calculator. When you are writing an explanation to people who never took a stats class before, write something they understand. So I would just use positive. The difference between five and nine is four. When I show the work to myself, I write five minus nine equals to negative four. All right. So that's why you can be moved the negatives. Uh, what if you have one negative and one positive? So that belongs to another situation, which I will talk about in a separate problem. All right, so that is the end of this problem. If you think my instruction is helpful and clear, give me a like, share this video in any social media for me. If you are new to the channel, click the subscribe button on your way out. I will see you all in the next one. Signing out.